Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Most of the time, to get to where you want to go, you got to take more than one step. And that's true in algebra, too. Today, we're going to talk about solving multi step equations. And I'm going to give you some steps you can take to make solving these equations a little bit easier. The first thing you may want to consider doing is to combine like terms. Well, what are like terms? In algebra, like terms are terms that contain the same variables raised to the same power. Only the coefficients of like terms are different. For instance, I got a 3x squared plus 6x plus 5 minus x squared plus 7 equals y. Are there like terms in there? Well, what I'm looking for are variables raised to the same power. And I can see a 3x squared and a minus x squared, they're both raised to the same power. The coefficients are different, but that's okay because the terms are similar. They're both x squared. Now, I've only got one x raised to the first power, so there are no like terms to it. I just got plus 6x. But I've got two numbers. I've got a 5 and I've got a 7. And I could combine those because they're like terms. So I've got a number of like terms, and if I move these like terms so they're sitting next to each other, it may be easier to see how to combine them. My 3x squared minus x squared would become 2x squared, and my plus 5 plus 7 could be simplified to plus 12. And then the expression would look like this, 2x squared plus 6x plus 12 equals y. So, one of the first things I always want to look to do is to combine like terms. Then, I want to consider using the distributive property to simplify the expression. Let's say I had this expression, 6 times 2x plus 5 minus 21 equals y. It'd be a lot easier to work with this if I combine the 6 and what it's being multiplied by, 2x plus 5, and changed it to 6 times 2x plus 6 times 5 minus 21 equals y. Now I can simplify that by carrying out the multiplication, and I get 12x plus 30 minus 21 equals y. Now I can combine like terms because I've got a plus 30 and a minus 21. So I could simplify that further to read 12x plus 9 equals y. So to, so, to solve a multi-step equation, I can combine like terms. I can use the distributive property to simplify. And then I'm going to want to isolate the variable by using inverse operations. For instance, if I had 12x plus 9 equals y, I want to isolate that x. I want it to change that expression to x equals something. So I've got to get rid of that plus 9 and that 12 multiplied by x. Let's get rid of the 9 first. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. And then it'll read 12x equals y minus 9. Now I've got to get rid of that 12 times, 12 times x. So I'll do the opposite of multiplying by 12. I'll divide by 12. And I'll divide both sides of the equation by 12. And when I simplify that, I've got x equals y minus 9 divided by 12. Well, let's put these tricks for solving multi-step solutions to the test. 
I got a friend who lives in Stockholm, Sweden. It's really cold in Stockholm. At least it is by my standards because I live in Florida. And my friend called last winter and said that the temperature in Stockholm was minus 10 degrees Celsius. Well, that, that felt awfully cold. I, I wasn't sure, though, exactly what minus 10 Celsius meant because I'm used to dealing in temperatures in Fahrenheit. I wondered if I could figure out how to convert 10 degrees or minus 10 degrees Celsius into a Fahrenheit temperature. So I went to Wikipedia and there was a formula for conversion, but it converted Fahrenheit to Celsius, not Celsius to Fahrenheit. In this expression, you could put the number of degrees in Fahrenheit into the expression, subtract 32 from it, multiply the result of that by 5 over 9, and it would equal the temperature in Celsius. But I wanted to go the other direction. I wanted to know what the temperature in Fahrenheit would be given that I know what the temperature is in Celsius. So I decided I'd use algebra and I'd manipulate this equation so it, turn, it would show me what the temperature was in Fahrenheit. And the first thing I did was modify it to make it look a little bit more like algebra. I've got F minus 32, that expression multiplied by the fraction 5 ninths, equals C. Well now, the first thing I want to do is to use the distributive property to distribute that 5 over 9 times the expression F minus 32. I want to take this 5 ninths and multiply it by the F, and then I want to take the 5 ninths and multiply it by the minus 32. So let's do that. We'll get 5 ninths F minus 5 ninths times 32 equals C. Now, I want to simplify the 5 ninths times 32 so I, I can have just one number there. I want to combine like terms. So when I do that, I've got 5 ninths F minus the product of 5 ninths times 32, or 17.78, equals the temperature in Celsius, or C. Now, i got to get rid of that minus 17.78 because I want to isolate my F. So I'm going to, I'm going to add 17.78 to both sides of the equation. And then on the left side of the equation, I've got minus 17.78 and positive 17.78, and they're opposites, and they're going to wipe each other out. So then the equation could be rewritten 5 ninths times F equals C plus 17.78. Well, I still haven't isolated my F. It's still sitting there, and there's a 5 ninths being multiplied times it. So what I want to do is divide by 5 ninths, to get rid of that, multiplied by 5 ninths. And i got to do that to both sides of the equation. And when I do, I've got 5 ninths F divided by 5 ninths equals the expression C plus 17.78 divided by 5 ninths. Now, those are opposites, the 5 ninths multiplied by and the 5 ninths divided by. So they're going to cancel and the expression could be rewritten and simplified to F equals the expression C plus 17.78 divided by 5 ninths. So I've done what I wanted to do. I isolated the F. I solved for F. Now, all i got to do is insert this temperature, minus 10 degrees, for C, the temperature in Celsius, do the math, and I'll, and I'll have the answer to what the temperature is in Fahrenheit. So I've done that. I've inserted minus 10 for C. And then when I do the math, I get the Fahrenheit temperature that's equivalent to minus 10 degrees Celsius is positive 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I've got an expression here, 
and I'm tr going to try to solve it for x. And, uh, you know, I tell you what, it's a little bit confusing. I think I can simplify this by combining like terms. I've got two terms that have an x in the, to the first power. I've got a minus 3x and a plus 6x. So I could combine those. They're like terms. I also have a 16 and a 15, and they're like terms. So I could combine those to 3x equals 21. Now, I want to isolate my variable. And how am I going to do that? By using inverse operations. Right now, my x is modified by a 3 that's being multiplied by it. So if I want to get rid of that 3, I want to use the inverse operation, or the I want to do the opposite. And the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So I'm going to divide 3x by 3, and that will eliminate the 3. But then I got to divide the other side of the equation, the 21, by 3. And when I do that, I get x equals 7. This one's a little bit harder than the last, but it's not too hard. When I look at that expression, I see um, an opportunity to use the distributive property. I can multiply that 4 by the x and by the minus 3, and that'll simplify that expression. So when I do that, I've got 4 times x, or 4x, minus 4 times 3, or 12, plus 7, minus 10x, equals 5. Well, I'm not done yet. I can combine like terms. I've got a 4x and a minus 10x, and I can combine them. And I've also got a 12, a minus 12, a plus 7, and I could combine those. And it would result in minus 5 minus 6x equals 5. Now, I've got to isolate my variable. And my variable, x, is being modified two ways. There's a minus 5 being added to it, or we're subtracting 5 from it, and we're also multiplying it by minus 6. So we always want to deal with getting rid of the pluses and the minuses first. So I want to add 5 to both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I get minus 6x equals 10. Now, I've got to get rid of that minus 6 that's being multiplied by x. So I want to do the opposite of multiplying by minus 6. I want to divide by minus 6. And when I do that, I get x equals minus 10 divided by 6. Now, I can simplify minus 10 divided by 6. It's, it's an uh, improper fraction, and I can convert it to a mixed number. And I can reduce the fraction to its lowest uh, denominator. And when I do that, I get x equals minus 1 and 2 thirds. I know I'm crazy, but I, I really like algebra. I think it's great. It's kind of like a game. And like any game, there's some rules you got to follow, and there's some strategies and procedures you can use to play the game better. And I hope that the strategies and procedures that we talked about today will help you solve multi-step equations. Now let's put them to use. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on solving multi-step equations. After you've done the worksheet, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on solving multi-step equations. I hope you had a good time, hope you learned a lot, and I hope we see you again real soon.